Here's another way of looking at that all-important swing that David Butler's been talking about. At the last election, the Conservatives led Labour by 107 seats. My favourite character was always Bob McKenzie. With the swingometer. Now, the thing about the swingometer is it goes to the left and then it goes to the right, and then it can don't, doesn't really go down the middle, but you've got to move it either that way or that way. And I love Bob McKenzie because in the 70s, you very rarely got a very interesting voice on television that wasn't, you know, PR British. And suddenly, uh, on the election night, you got this rather strange man with strange sideburns, sort of swinging away and being rather excitable. And uh, I loved him to bits. We start from October 74 result, Labour three seat overall majority. Mrs. Thatcher has to get not just a 1%, 2%, 3%, 4%, 4.5%. .4 it wasn't so much what the swingometer did, is the fact that it was quite funny. Um, because, it, you know, you've got, the, you've got the word swing, you've got the word swingers. Somewhere inside there is the possibility they will say that. And, it, and the swingometer itself was uh, a sort of flaccid phallic symbol that sort of waggled in the middle. So I always en enjoyed that. Uh, they're even having to extend his swingometer. Let's they, see him doing it. There he is. Well, it's rather like painting the, the Sistine Chapel here. We're bringing the swingometer up to date to make room for the kind of swings. There have been several, around 9% to the Conservatives, one of them being Enoch Powell's swing. May I call you brother? If you wish, Thank I you. would be very flattered and delighted. Goodbye, Mr. Brown. Goodbye, Brother Day. There was the wonderful moment where uh, Robin Day got quite sort of heated with uh, with Enoch Powell and and uh, so Mr Powell will you be joining Mr Heathscuff but were he to ask you that is a hypothetical question in vain do you cast the net in front of the bird that is Proverbs 1 verse 17 I looked it up is it possible that uh, if uh, in the flush of a Conservative victory, if there is one, that Mr Heath should invite you to serve in a Conservative cabinet, ah. you would accept? Ah, yes. The old, old trap of a hypothetical question. In vain is the net spread in the sight of a bird. And you know, Robin, I'm an, too old a bird for that. It wasn't meant as a trap. I was just, oh, doing, no. I was just oh. doing my best, but I have to leave you now, Mr Powell. Yes, all right. Goodbye. Thank you, thank you and sleep well. The one that I remember most was Jeremy Thorpe, and he had you know, had a difficult time in the 70s. And I think it was the 79 election where uh, the election result was announced and he, he'd lost. Thorpe, John Jeremy Thorpe, Liberal, 23,000. And there was this big graphic came out, Jeremy Thorpe, out. And you realise the brutality of election night. There's this very graceful transfer of power takes place to pause for a moment and realize there are about 20 or 25 countries in the world where this happens like this. Uh, and there are 150 countries in the world, and most of them are dictatorships, autocracies, military governors, all the rest. And I think we ought to pause and respect the fact that this is a great and exciting moment uh, when, without any murmur, supreme power is laid down by one lot of chaps and picked up by another. And it's a rare thing. It's a rather humbling thing for politicians, really, isn't it? Because they've got to acknowledge that ultimately they have no power at all. It's ours, in, you know, where we put our, our cross that really matters. And as, as I said, it, it can be a very brutal night for, for certain people, but it's the night that belongs to us.